I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. So take everything in this episode as entertainment purposes only. Yep. And I'm Dan eats everything, but I know nothing. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what, you don't know anything about any know, of this. I don't know nothing about nothing. I don't know shit about fuck Marty. I feel like I'm financially inside of you or something. I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the test. I'm happy to discuss with the committee my purchases of GameStop shares, and my discussions of their fair value on social media. A few things I am not. I am not a cat, nor am I a hedge fund. I like the stock. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Godspeed Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Guy. And I am Danny. It's everything. Can we like start off with you drinking like some spring water or like, you know, like natural spring water and not from a bottle, plastic bottle? Like I could send you an app that shows you where all the natural springs are next to you. I can send you an app where all the, shows you where all the McDonald's are. Here we are. Okay. Okay. Uh, so how are you? Uh, no, I'm I'm doing really good, man. Um, good. Yeah, fucking, I've been trying this new thing. It's a little game I like to play with myself when I go. We go out to eat a lot. My new game is: Can I finish my food before the server comes back to ask me if everything's okay? That sounds horrible. Sounds like <laughs> digestive problems. Do you want to know how often I win this game? I hope zero times. Every time. I win this game. Every, every time. time? I win every time. So either Man. I'm getting faster or servers are getting slower. Are you at least pooping correctly? I'm regular. No, no, no. I mean, like, you know how you're supposed to poop, right? <laughs> Does it come out just as fast as it goes in? Is that what you're asking me? It comes out fast. So if you if you stand up on top of a toilet and squat... That's how we're supposed to be pooping. And it comes out like that, like so fucking quick. There's no grunting. There's no issues. You're literally in and out of the bathroom. Oh, I'm, I'm not ever. I mean, come on, bro. The amount of food I eat, do you think I could get backed up? It's just, I mean, it's plowing its way yes, through one way or I'm another. almost positive you're... <laughs> Okie dokie. I'm deaf. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Uh, a couple things on that. Have you seen me lately? I, I, I am not the guy you want standing on your toilet. Okay. Why? <laughs> they don't make break. They don't make them that strong, bro. Porcelain's. You just could porcelain. sit on. You could sit on it with all your weight. You can stand on it with all your weight. Then. It um, just it, it, it unkinks your. There's a, there's a whole industry called squatty potties. Yeah, I've used that, them. That that's what they're for is so you eh, can it just kind of your, squat while you're sitting it, it, it unkinks your bowels so if you're actually standing up and squatting correctly it's like squatting in a hole like digging a hole when we were when toilets didn't exist yeah well fun fact squatting. for you when i shit you know how divers uh when they do their backflips they squeeze their knees that's how i shit so how divers when they squeeze their knees yeah, you're you, sitting and you got your knees up like this yeah i mean that's the same as squatting i guess i like your shirt man thanks <laughs> you made this for me a long time ago i could I never did? wear it because of the green screen oh what's it say it says it says you know promotion bud promotion oh, guys it's a good. watermelon you like mine it's a watermelon you like mine yeah <sighs> What you you love that show? Years and years ago, I would have, but yeah, it's great. During during the whole scam demic, Jesse Pinkman, I apologize <laughs> for being white. <laughs> I take responsibility. Yeah, and then you got and then you got Walt, who's like super fucking liberal weirdo. They're both a bunch of. See, they're both probably chomos, um, or at least bought and paid for. I think you're, is, I think you're too close to it, man. Or you were too close to it. I never, you yeah. know, I, like the well, celebrities. I never was really interested in anything they ever did ever, except for uh, if they put out something good to watch. Their whole personal lives, I never fucking knew nothing. Yeah, about. but they all expose they all expose themselves during 2020. I agree, but I still didn't pay a lot of attention then. You know, 
I yeah, dude, I was all wrapped up in it. If you guys go look at the videos before the Godspeed podcast episode, you'll see me doing movie reviews. You did, you, yeah, you did love your movies. I was all caught up in all that. I mean, you lived in Hollywood. Just a waste, just a waste of time. I moved to Hollywood to sell screenplays. Dude, were you trafficked? What? You lived in Hollywood, man. And so what? I wasn't trafficked. Well, were you on the other side of that coin? I wasn't trafficking either. Mm, I'm watching you. <laughs> okay. You're the one wearing the shirt. <laughs> You're the one that listens to Drake. I, <laughs> this guy had like <laughs> five good songs... Ten years ago, bro. Relax. There's like a, a I don't know, man. I, that whole thing. Like every single artist, they're all getting exposed. Beyonce, Drake, Diddy. They're Jay-Z. all getting exposed. And it's it's actually pretty hilarious I heard, to watch. I don't know if it's true, but I heard some stuff about R. Kelly. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I heard. I don't know. I'm still waiting for the... I think it was yeah. like a trial or something. They, uh... I saw a trailer on YouTube for um, bad a new Bad Boys movie's coming out. Oh. And I'm sitting here thinking, how are people watching Will Smith? Because the only thing I kept thinking in my head was... Slap! That dude on, <laughs> no, that, no, that dude on... There's a dude on... His old security guard was on an interview. And he said that he walked in on Will Smith getting murdered by another dude. I saw sexual acts that I when I walked in on. Who'd you walk in on? Him and Dwayne Martin. Hollywood is the hurry up and, and, and wait game. So three minutes later after them telling me, hey, you got eyes on Will. You got, we, we, we need him to come watch this. So I'm running all over the, the, the studio. He's not in his dressing room. I go to the cafeteria. I'm like, well, but I see his car there. So now I'm holding Dwayne down too. So I have the keys to his dressing room. So I'm like, yo, and they're calling my, my they, I'm on walkie talkie and they're calling my cell phone. Yo, we need to get Will here. And I'm like, yo, kind of fucked down. Like I'm trying to find is like, this is, this is unlike him. All right, I open the um, door to Dwayne's dressing room and that's when I see Dwayne and having anal sex with Will. It was a couch and um, Will was bent over on the couch and Dwayne was standing up, killing him, murder, like murder. It was murder in there. Dude, have you heard the audio from Diddy and that other rapper? No. There's audio not... of a rapper getting his ass cheeks clapped by Diddy. And it sounds like he's getting murdered. It's fucking... Boo. 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 <laughs> Dude, it's Boo. bad, bro. Dude, they're all... It's all up. It, legit, this is me. I'm going to... Like, you can go listen. I'm sure you probably I'm find not going to... I won't go listen. I'm going to do a recreation. Ready? It sounds like this. It's very, very disgusting. And supposedly it's some rapper, like a current rapper in Diddy. Some uh, security guard or somebody walked in on it or something like that. You may have just said that about Will Smith. It's probably... Somebody walked in on it and recorded it because it was a Probably Travis Scott. <laughs> no. he just be letting people die at his concerts and just keep singing. Well, you know, you gotta make money. He already made the money. They're already in the... They already paid for the ticket and they're inside. Oh shit! Anyways, <laughs> okay. So, have you heard about anything that's going? All right. So, we're filming this on May fourteenth, Tuesday, May fourteenth. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about anything that's going on in the past day or two? Uh, do you with not, the financial market? Do you not see the screen behind me? Do you no, know what that was? Do you know what that is? No. What is it? A little place called Bora Bora. I love Bora. Oh, I would have known that if I actually blew the screen up. Yeah, I can't wait to go there. When are we going there? If today and yesterday are any indication, very shortly. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I cannot wait. (laughs) That's funny you put Bora Bora in the background. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so uh, GameStop, which everybody's been telling me for three years now that it's dead and over. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's happening? It was at on May third or fourth. It was at ten bucks. Mm. Slowly rose up to sixteen bucks, mm. and then yesterday it went to third. It went 
up to thirty nine dollars, and then it, at close it went back to thirty. Mm. And then when we woke up this morning, it was at seventy. You don't say a share. Um, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna like we're gonna pretend like you never heard <laughs> about GameStop before. Okay, um, hold since on. Since we're fi- let me tell you what I know about GameStop. Okay, I would go in there with a brand new, literally a two week old game that I just paid seventy dollars for. Two weeks old, perfect mint condition. Only thing wrong with it is I opened it, played it, beat it, went down there. They would give me 17 cents for that fucking game. (laughs) 17 cents? 17 cents. And then I would watch them take it to the counter behind them, label it, put it out on the counter. They're selling it for $65.99. Yeah. Have you ever drove off a lot with a car? Yeah, it's... uh, You have, actually. (laughs) You just did that recently. (laughs) I have. Did you get all your money back, though? Yeah. How'd How'd that work? We'll talk off air. Okay. All right. Just trying to get us more content. Well, I don't, uh, listen, I don't want to, you know. I'm <laughs> just kidding, dude. I got you. I got you, dog. Um, all right. So GameStop, if you're not familiar with what happened, um, uh, well, I'll put on this video so it's not just me talking the whole time. Unless I should just go <coughs> over what happened. It's up to you, dog. Eh, we'll go over this, and then if you have any questions, I'll, I can just answer them. All right. How about da? How about da? <laughs> She's hot now. Oh, Jesus. She is. Is she? Yeah, she hot. I mean, I don't know if she's hot right this second, but she got attracted <laughs> after that <clears throat> and became legal. <laughs> what? Oh, dude. She went to, she was, uh, she was trafficked from, there, Dr. Phil has like a skinwalker ranch or some shit like that. And it's like, I mean, supposedly trafficked. Like, all of the con- contestants, the people that go on Dr. Phil's show, the troublemaking girls, yeah, they were sent to one of his ranches or whatever, his obedient ranches or whatever, and there's a lot of fucking horrible stories that came from that, so she might have been victim of... Anyway. Uh, there's a comedian who does a Dr. Phil impression and has other comedians on and literally just fucking... Doesn't clown Dr. Phil, but uses his kind of personality to make fucking really funny jokes. It's, it's really entertaining. <clears throat> but they do live shows at, like, uh, the Comedy Store in L.A. and oh, okay. whatnot. I've been there. Yeah. I have not, I sadly. I think I saw Dane Cook and Sean Wayans there one night. Dude, they, I mean, top-tier comedians, you, before the pandemic, would be in there every night. Oh, yeah. They'd be in there Tuesday night. Practicing just, their sets. Yep. Dave Chappelle just stopping randomly. <clears throat> Everyone, but <sighs> okay. So uh, here is you know a little bit about the stock market and what happened okay. with GameStop. All right. It's for people to support companies they believe in and give them money so they can grow their operations while making a profit themselves along the way. The stock market should, at least in theory, represent the epitome of meritocracy. Because if a company does well, its market cap grows. If it shows a lack of vision or fails to bring in good results, it then tanks. But by this point, I don't think anyone truly believes it's meritocracy that drives the stock market when you have billionaires and hedge funds out there manipulating the market with huge capital. I mean, if you just Google top 10 hedge funds, it's right there in plain sight. Davidson Kempner Capital Management, $33 billion in assets under management. Citadel Advisors, $29 billion. Elliott Management, $73 billion. Man Group. I mean, talk about a little creativity here. <laughs> These guys literally called themselves the Man Group. They've been on the market since 1784 and they have over $117 billion in assets under management. So when you see these mammoths dominating the market for literally hundreds of years, it should at the very least put a question mark in your mind as to whether you're really on the same boat as them in terms of influencing the market. Historically speaking, if these guys have not approved of a particular company, they've had the leverage to sink its valuation all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. The way they do that is by short selling a stock. Short sellers often have the power to keep the stock price exactly where they want it. Now, does that sound fair to you? Because that doesn't resemble meritocracy to me. It just sounds like a bunch of billionaires sitting around with cigars in their mouths, deciding who to let in and who to keep out of their fan fancy exclusive club. Historically, there hasn't been much that you could do about it though, until the internet started to get a little wiser. 
So all this makes sense to you? You already knew all this. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. In 2013, this guy right here, Vlad Tenev, founded a company called Robinhood. The mission of the app, much like its name indicates, was to break barriers and allow the little guy to trade, even if all they had was $20. The slogan of Robinhood was literally, let the people trade. Much like the character of Robinhood, you know, steal from the rich, give to the poor, this new platform revolutionized investing by allowing commission-free stock trading, thus bringing in a huge wave of inexperienced but eager young investors to which the stock market had been inexperienced accessible before. And probably one of the most fascinating places on the internet to sprout as a direct result of this was the subreddit r slash Wall Street Bets. Stepping into that world will plunge you into a real life version of the Wolf of Wall Street except a thousand times crazier. Wall Street Bets has already had a history of controversial episodes and have often been cited on news stations as irresponsible trolls with no respect for the stock market. But what happened in January took their profile to a completely new level. So we've talked about the hedge funds, about Robinhood and the rise of Wall Street bets, but the way they all come together is through GameStop. But just like Netflix killed Blockbuster, online video game purchases made GameStop pretty irrelevant. And seeing how the GameStop business model was losing popularity, the Wall Street hedge funds, like the vultures that they are, started heavily short selling GameStop on the stock market. So one day, a Reddit user on Wall Street bets by the name of Senior Hedgehog pointed out how 84% of shares were short, meaning there was five times more power driving the stock down than there were people organically supporting the company. And mind you, this was posted in April of 2020. By January of 2021, the short interest percentage was over 140%, which means more shares were being shorted than there were actual shares in circulation. This was a paradox that showed how greedy the hedge funds had become. And by being greedy, they had become vulnerable. And this time, Reddit was ready to teach them a lesson. So Reddit users coordinated to go on the Robinhood app and collectively bought GameStop stock at insane volumes, driving the price from around $19 at the start of January to a whopping $480 at the highest peak. This is called a short squeeze, and it's not an uncommon tactic on Wall Street, but never before has it been put into practice by regular people coming together on the internet. The hedge funds got a mouthful of their own medicine, and it was bitter. The 90 million shares they had lent out at $5 to $10 now had to be bought back at 50 to 100 times the original <sighs> price. According to Fortune by January the 29th, the losses had risen to $19.75 billion. Hedge funds had to be bailed out so as to not go bankrupt. Investment bank Goldman Sachs warned that the entire stock market could crash if Reddit users didn't sell their shares in order to drive the stock price back to its original spot. And as all of this madness was unfolding, the biggest promoter of giving power to the people, Robinhood, decided to restrict users from buying more GameStop stock while still allowing them to sell their current shares, thus showing a clear bias in favor of the big institutions. Now, of course, liquidity played a big role in this decision, Robinhood themselves requiring a cash injection of $2.4 billion to stay in business, but to Reddit, this gesture was seen as the ultimate betrayal. The brand of Robinhood was expected to stand exactly for what Wall Street bets had managed to accomplish, stealing from the rich and empowering the little guy. Instead, the app was seemingly siding with the hedge funds, and so Vlad Tenev instantly became a villain yeah, so uh, Robin had fucked everybody over. The mm -hmm. stock went up to like $480 or something crazy. <clears throat> and then they immediately shut off buying and they scared everybody into selling. Uh, well, they didn't scare everybody into selling. They scared a lot of people into selling. Um, and then they manipulated the stock back down to regular prices. Um, and yeah, so the short squeeze. During COVID, they thought that it was going to go bankrupt. Mm hmm. They thought GME was going to go bankrupt, so all these short sellers were shorting the stock heavily. Reddit users and this dude named Roaring Kitty um, bought a shit ton of stock, and the price skyrocketed, and then they literally shut down the stock market so they can bring it back down. Um, and they never covered their shorts. So everybody that's saying GameStop is done and it's over, the squeeze happened it's not over they did because they didn't they didn't cover any of the shorts they didn't buy back any of their stock because retail had retail owns like it's like over a hundred percent of the float which means they own over a hundred percent of the available shares and the reason why there's so much more shares is because hedge funds are creating synthetic shares 
and then shorting them. So to keep the stock down. Does that make any sense? So um, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. But if you have GameStop, I'd hold on to that shit. I would definitely hold on to that shit. You don't want to sell, sell, sell? I'm not selling. Dude, uh, they lost another $5 billion today. Hedge funds. You don't think they're going to... Well, no, I, I, may... I saw um, Portnoy posted on Barstool. He's He's got half a million dollars invested in GME. And... Uh, and uh, the other one there, the other one you like, AMC. I, don't, uh, I think AMC's. Uh, uh, they want people to buy AMC so they won't buy GME. Ah, uh, I see. Is this guy oh, you're talking about? Yeah, Portnoy. Did they halt games? No, up 108 percent, up 120 percent, 116 on AMC. Kind of hear a 108 on GameStop. GameStop looks halted to me. I can't note 98, 115 on AMC. Who's here and buy, 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 buy? Who wants what? GameStop at 60, 38. I can't even tell. I don't know if my my phone is keeping up with it. Up 108 plus 33, 63, 56 on GameStop. Who has AMC at uh, 1140 now? 1120, 1132, 1140, 1132, 1122. He's a very rich tell. idiot. I need one of those. I've been asking for one of those Bloomberg terminals since the. He fucking event. opted out a long halted. time ago. Is it started talking shit halted. on GameStop. GameStop. Now he's back halted. on it. Bullshit! 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 Why is it halted? They. I said it when we did it. They don't halt you when you when you're losing. I've lost so much money and I'm begging. Hey, Ken Griffin. Hey, Vlad, halt it when I'm losing. They only halt it when you're winning. That's why the game is rigged. That's why me and uh, Roaring Kitty co-starred together in Dumb Money. What's that? So, <laughs> I knew you were going to bring him up. That's why I grabbed a clip of him. Um, he was talking big shit on GameStop a couple years ago. I believe you. Like, big shit. I believe you. And now he now he's back on the train. <clears throat> yeah, of course. Uh yeah, but all these shows are coming out. Like, uh, you know, you know who Jim Cramer is? No. You know the guy that like smashes oh, things with a baseball bat. The late night stock advisor. Is it late night? I'm pretty sure. That's the only time I've ever seen it. Flipping the tra- channels late. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. So listen to what he says here. And that would be that would be fantastic. The company should take advantage of the capital markets. I love capitalism. And just take it and become. You know what? We're going to be the, the single are, source of take two. Yeah, but there are certain mechanisms that they have to actually have in place to be able to sell stock. Into well, what market. I'm saying is you challenge the SEC and you do it. And the SEC then comes in and says, you shouldn't have done that. But you know what? We're going to make you pay a $100 million fine. Okay. Just call up and say, sold to you. We're selling yeah. $100 million too. Yeah, yeah. what are they going to do? Like, what is this? What is Dan's going to say? You know what? I'm breaking that trade. He's basically saying to close it, shut it down again. And then he tweeted this out earlier today. (coughs) Former SEC head questions whether the government should allow what's happening with GME right now. These are like mainstream (coughs) stock fucking people like that people listen to and they're they're literally screwing over retail investors ain't that fucked up i mean it's just more evidence that um the game the game is rigged right yeah and that's why i only own gme i don't own any other stock follow follow uh nancy pelosi's uh, wealth right since she came into office making uh, i don't know what they make maybe a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, maybe 150, uh, and now she's multi multi millionaire from yeah. all of her stock trading. Her and her husband's stock trading. Yeah, it's weird. Good. Before they before they uh, allowed, or before they but the Biden administration decided that all cars had to be electric by a certain date. Um, yeah, 2030. They they went out and bought tons of stock in uh, battery making companies. Hmm. Before. Before they announced that, is that weird to you? Yeah. Does that sound no, like ins- weird. insider information to you? Oh, it's one hundred percent insider information. Mm. Yeah. But they don't allow they don't allow the little guy to win. Yeah. Your government cares about you guys. 
Have you seen this let Washington me, let me, Post? Hold on, let me tell you again. Your government cares about you. No, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> Just uh, getting tired. Have you seen this, this Washington Post post uh, opinion? The good, good guys, guys in the, the GameStop group. story? Snatch funds in the short sellers. They're the good guys. Are you fucking kidding me? You post this shit? Like, this is what you say to retail investors, regular people? I mean, who's reading the Washington Post anyways? Not me. The pe- no, Here's the thing. That's true for probably for the people who actually read the Washington Post and believe it. They yeah. probably are on that side of... You know, I was... Yeah. I was, what was I watching today? I don't know what were you watching today. Well, here's the thing. Let me. I'm gonna expand a little bit on this. Uh, I was on a spiritual journey this weekend. Nice. Um, and you know, I had some self realizations about myself, but I also had some self realizations about life in general, and everything, literally everything, um, from rel- personal relationships you have with people to uh, business, everything is, and, and, but more so, the media and government. It's all on how you paint the picture. Yeah. Everybody everybody's an artist. Everybody. Everybody creates their own reality. Everybody creates their own reality. Yeah. And how you decide to paint your picture for, you know, your relationships, your friends, your your family, um, your your employer or your employees to how government and media paints the pictures for us. Or the stupid people who pay attention to mainstream media. It's really yeah. anyways, that was one of the enlightenment that's good yeah i like it i mean it's a it's reoccurring but you know that's one thing that stood out well dude that's why i didn't know what so i had a i had an issue with coming up what the episode should be Mm -hmm. and today with today and yesterday with gamestop just i was like all right i'll do the gamestop episode now but like i feel like a lot of the episodes we do it's just i'm creating a, a bad reality because we talk about such negative stuff you know yeah yeah you know I it's do. just, it's uh, like I was going to do uh, radiation and 5G and like all that, but I didn't want to like focus on it. You know what I mean? So we need, you're saying we need to start coming up with some positive uh, themes? I would like to turn this <coughs> podcast into a positive, uh, I mean, dude, we get comments that are like, oh, I didn't know that about Michael Jackson. That's fucking crazy. Like yeah. we get stuff like that. So it's like, speaking of we are waking episode. people up, but it's, yeah. Speaking of that. Uh, I'm glad you finally met that Dave uh, guy, the fan Dave, and had him on yeah. the, the pod. Uh, I think, I mean, it's nice having a third. They bring a nice dynamic. You, we used to get this one guy um, BSing with Bobby or something like that. I haven't Billy. seen him in a while. Uh, so, you know, I'm wondering what he's up to. He was just he's on just... a few episodes ago. He was in the Chomo episode. <laughs> Bobby, I miss you, buddy. We literally did Billy, Billy. <laughs> David, David. He was just on. <laughs> what are you talking about? Just talking shit. This is our first episode without a guest in a while. <laughs> just talking shit, man. You can't. You, you you don't like just being on the episode with me? No, I lo- I like a third dynamic, man. It, like, you know. Yeah. It's fun, but anyways, For sure. I, was, I was literally just talking shit and wanted to. I mean, I got you. Anyways, talk shit all you want, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, look at the look at the trending tickers for today. Okay. And Where's GME? Not on there. Exactly. Because they don't want you buying GME. They want you buying AMC. And What's plug? I don't know what plug is, but B&B oh, is... Oh, is that cookie plug? Have you been to a cookie plug, bro? I don't know. What, I, don't know. I don't know what that is. Dude, cookie plug. Have you heard of crumble cookies? Yeah, I used to eat crumble cookies like it was my fucking job. Oh, my God. Okay, so... Dude, I used to bring crumble cookies to clients just yeah. so I can have some fucking crumble cookies, so... <laughs> I used to give them as birthday gifts uh, to my, my uh, employees. Fucking expensive. Um, but anyways, uh, Cookie Plug. It's like a... They, they, I mean, it's a cookie store, obviously, but their cookies are, like, that thick and, like, that big around. So and it's cake. It's... It's, it's a, hard cake. Yeah, a little bit, but... um. They went after like a hip hop theme. Like you go in and they got hip hop bumping. They got big mural of uh, Biggie and Tupac, and like they sell purple Kool Aid. <laughs> oh my gosh! Purple drink. Purple drink. Uh, cookie oh, that plug. Stuff. This episode brought to you by Cookie Plug. Go out and get your cookies uh, when they open. It's up not sponsored. 
where are these checks you're coming telling, from? You're saying if you're getting checks, I want to know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Somebody's sending me something. I don't know. Somebody's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're removing GME from all kinds of shit. And basically, the short sellers should have already been fucked because they're not, they're not, all these failures to deliver should have already kickstarted the right. Moaz, which Moaz is mother of all short squeezes. Um, so GameStop should have already skyrocketed, but they're, re- they're manipulating, illegally manipulating the stock. Right. Every single day, very, very heavily. And like I said, retail owns over 100% of the float. So there's more shares out there than there's shares. Right. Because they just keep creating new ones and fucking right, everybody right in the over. game. Right in the system. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, there's a there's a lot of... This guy, this guy is he's such a fucking... He's funny as hell, but um, he explains this really, really well. If you're if you're confused as what a short uh, okay so, a lot of people that own GME think it's gonna go to like a million a share, or more, and that just seems absolutely batshit. Um, people are like, well, if it goes over a million a share, no one's gonna get their money because the everything's gonna crash and the economy is gonna crash. But I want everybody to realize, Joe Biden sends trillions of dollars over to Ukraine every day, so GameStop isn't going to fucking make a dent in what's happening. Uh, on that, you just remember, uh, do you know how much Trump wanted to spend building a wall in Mexico to, <laughs> hold on, to secure yeah. our border? Yeah. you know what that was? Do you remember the figure? It was like 30, yeah, it was nine, 30 billion? Nine, $9 billion. Okay, yeah. Do you know how much we've sent to Ukraine to secure their border? Uh, wait, trillions? Uh, it was at least, I think it's it. We're at like, I, th- I think. Don't quote me. I know it's over seventy-five billion dollars we've sent them. It's in the trillions because I remember they accidentally sent like seven trillion over there or some shit like that. Accidentally. I don't know about all that, but but it, it literally <clears throat> it goes there and then just goes back into their pockets. My my point here is exactly. Yeah, they don't care. Joe Jaina. Yeah, I know. Uh, so this guy's gonna tell you a little bit more about uh, short selling and, and why. I remember when why- I remember when he whooped Hulk Hogan's ass, bro. <laughs> I remember. Uh, he he explains why the floor is whatever number you want as long as you're holding mm. and you don't sell. The reason we have this floor. Okay, is because we know that we own more than the float by like nine thousand percent. There's some estimates that it's only like two fifty, right? On the low end. Through nine thousand percent, and these are like conservative estimates. Like I've seen data all the way through that. For He's example, a, really a company can only be sold hundred there's only hundred percent of a company, right? Some of that company is owned by insiders. Some of it's owned by institutions. Some of it's held by whatever. And then some of it's held by retail. Okay. There's only We're supposed retail. to be 78 million shares Regular. available. This free float right here, I think is 26 million that were, that's available. But for some reason, if you add up all the shares in different brokerage, like, or traders, or, uh, sorry, trade, uh, God, what is it trying to say? In different brokerages, such as like E-Trade, Fidelity, et cetera you see that inst- not only just by the people that in their accounts, like E-Trade will say 80% of our people are holding GME. So then you can say, how many users do you have? What's 80% of that? That gives you a number. Let's add that number to the next brokerage and see what they have. Keep doing that and you realize that we own the float. We own the float many times over just by our what data is available. And it's probably way worse than that. Well, how is this possible? How can you sell more than what you have and that's available? What they do is they're making fake synthetic shares. The best way to understand this is if you, my favorite, this is probably my favorite example, is if you had a car that you wanted to sell, right? Now you only have one car with one title to the car that says you're the owner of that car, right? You only have one of those. But let's say this guy, this guy, this guy, everybody on Craigslist asks you for the car. But you want you realize that hey, if I have a Xerox machine, I can just print off a bunch of these uh, titles to the car, and I can do this over and over again. 
and I can make way more money. So if this car is theoretically, let's just say it's a hundred dollars, like based on share prices, right? It's a hundred dollars. You know, instead of making only a hundred dollars off this car, I made a hundred, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600 dollars. So you're like doing this countless times over because you're making a killing. However, you're saying to myself, well, you, why would you do that with a car? Well, this type of car, a share, right? is never actually a piece of paper that you get. Imagine I keep saying your car's in the shop. That's called a fill to deliver. Okay, your car's in the shop, so I never actually have to deliver these shares. So I never have to see them. So who owns the car? Well, everyone owns the car. Every single person that has one of these certificates that legally bought that certificate, that share, it says in their online account that it is a real share. So to them, it counts as a real share, even though you sold it to them as fake. How can that be? Well, if any SEC enforcement agency actually did their job and made this guy pay back all these people or deliver the car, which he can't do. He can't deliver the car that many times. So he has to go back to the market, AKA an auto dealership and whatever Carfax or CarMax is selling the car for, this is the open marketplace. Then that is what he has to buy that guy's car for. Okay. It's a hundred grand. Okay. I'll buy one for that price. Okay. It's 200 grand. I'll buy one for that price. Deliver it. Okay. It's four, five, four, a million dollars. Okay. I have to buy it back and give it to him because I'm being enforced. Everything's getting liquidated. And that is why it doesn't matter if people pay per hand because this amount of float, this amount of short interest, this amount that we're over by, because of synthetics and because of illegal naked shorting, which is what they're doing, you're seeing that even if people sell no way up, you are owed that car and whatever price you set, it's got to sell for. But if everybody sells at $5, right, you're only going to get $5. So that's where the question is, how do we get to 10 million? How do we get to 20 million? Well, you get to 20 million because if everyone says, no, we're not selling at five, we all just uh, look at each other and we agree. We just know what's going to happen. We say, this guy's, this guy's totally f totally f <laughs> right. Instead of selling for $5, when he comes to buy a car from me and I work at Carfax, we all work there together. He's got to buy a car from all of us, right? Got to buy the sh our shares back. How many cars we have? We're going to set whatever price we want. Some people might get greedy and sell a car for earlier, 50,000, 500,000. But all of us with big dicks and big tits are sitting here loving this because we know that we're going to wait till he offers us 10 million. And we're going to look at him and say, no. And we're going to see how high he bids. 20, okay, 20 million. No. 50 million, please buy it, buy it back. Okay, I'll, I'll give you one car. Oh, I gotta buy a hundred more back from you. Yeah. Another hundred million? No, 200 million now. That's why they have to do that over and over and over and over again. And the beautiful thing for us is we are not on this end. A short, a short seller, right? Someone who's short, can't see this. A short seller, Is somebody who hasn't who hasn't bought yet, <laughs> right? And somebody who's long like we are, is somebody who's just waiting to sell. So because of that, these people are screwed because they have to buy. We've already bought. The waiting's easy. We're just waiting to sell at whatever price we want. These guys have to, have to have to buy back all the time. Well, how can this happen? Wouldn't everybody just buy and hold? No, it's never happened before on the scale because people are dumb and people just figured out we're all literally retarded. And we just figured out that if you just buy and hold, not only do we figure it out on this stock, people figure out for people figure it out for other shortest stocks like AMC, but AMC is not yeah. the mother load. The, the stock that has the <clears throat> biggest fail to deliver is the, the biggest issue with synthetic shorts and not just what we know is visible, not just what we can estimate based on public data, but what people have dug into the dark pools and figured out this crazy amount of trading, not just domestic, but foreign and also in other pockets of the world that obviously are foreign, but there's like a, a couple different ways that they can do this scheme. So maybe you think it's 
like 3,000. Well, the problem is every day it goes by, they keep selling more fake shares. We keep buying more of them and not selling them. So this problem gets worse and worse for them. So of course they go to the SEC and say, hey, there's no way we can do this. And we literally are gonna lose trillions of dollars. What are we gonna do? They're like, well, I don't know. We're gonna force something. Maybe we usually give you a million dollar fine. We can't do this time. They're like, we, have, we literally have to buy this time. The definition of short, a short position is literally infinite risk. Infinite right. risk. You have a lot to gain, but there's infinite risk if you lose. So because of that, the Volkswagen squeeze, for example, was part of a merger, right? And it was not nearly as shorted as we are. It was maybe shorted 26%. I think was like the number, something like that. I could be wrong. I think it's like in the 20s, something low. And it still got to 1K. There's been other stocks. I can't remember which ones off the top of my head, but they've gotten up on a short squeeze to like 35K a share. And because of that, you have a... You already have a roadmap that this is a real thing that they have to pay things on. Yeah, DGAF was was 40% shorted and is at 24k. If you have a 9,000% shorted thing, and this is not even with a group of a group of people who have individually said, "No, we're not selling." This is with people who see the price going up and they're like, "Hey, let me sell, let me sell your car. Hey, let me sell your car. Hey, let me sell your car." Because they see the price going up, but they don't ever realize that they could set the price. They don't ever think about that. But all of us, for the first time in history, have said, we can set the price. So instead of selling right here because we see the price is going up and we see that there's a buyer, let's see how high this goes. And that, my friends, is the MOS. Woo! So Volkswagen at 26% went up to 1000 a share. GameStop is estimated between 250 percent to nine thousand percent and more shorted with a whole bunch of people that aren't going to sell compared to volkswagen where people are just willing to so sell. what are they going to do the price per share is going to i understand that skyrocket what are the short sellers going to do they're gonna go bankrupt lose their money and every every hedge fund is insured by the banks and the banks are insured by the u.s treasury for trillions of dollars so no matter who it falls on the dtcc or the dtc whoever it falls on they're going to have to pay it out you say that there so there's um i this is a silent can i make a prediction can i make a prediction yeah 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 of course <clears throat> the u.s government steps in yep. closes and cancels all gme stocks and trades cancels everything no. out. Any GME holder is uh, completely removed from uh, owning that stock and nobody has to do anything. And they are taking What a hor what a horrible what a horrible prediction. What a negative negative prediction. If I know if I know one thing about the government, they're not going to let the banks and the US Treasury go bankrupt. They're just going to bail them out. Well, no, the U.S. <clears throat> Treasury is not going to go bankrupt because it's all on the Rothschilds' books right now anyway. Just That's just a guess. So this is – do you see this, the books? I do. Okay. So if you look at the website on the bottom, this is where you can get all of these files. These are all individual files, okay? This is from regular people. These. This is all proofs. Each individual file are proofs of what's going on and – that it's going to happen and like laws that the DTCC and the, the all these major government agencies laws that they have passed to make sure this never happens again after this. There's 248 different files. I could have pulled a bunch and read them, but that'd be a very boring episode. Um, but yeah, the website at the bottom of this video right here, go to that website and you can open up all of these files and it's all that's all proofs that GameStop is about to pop off like no other stock has ever popped off. Is that you scrolling? Did you screen record this? Is that you scrolling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No, it, um, it looks but, yeah. 
Go ahead. It's called. It's called. <clears throat> it's 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 off of a Reddit website called Super Stonk, and it's uh it's called DD Due Diligence. Stonks. Super Stonks. Stonks. But yeah, dude. Uh, I can't. I've li- I I've talked to somebody literally, and they've removed their shares from one place that they had them in like hundreds of shares Mm -hmm. from one company that they were dead set on that was going to skyrocket and they moved them over to GameStop just for me explaining what's going on with it because they had no knowledge of GameStop and as soon as I told him that he went and did a ton of fucking research and then removed his stock from one place and put it on another and put it on GameStop like this isn't just me being conspiracy theorist. This is, there's like legit, legitimate. Um, info out there. I think at the beginning of this episode, you have to put a disclaimer up that we're not financial advisors, because people have gotten sued from this shit before. Haven't I said? Didn't I say that? You did, I'm not but a financial I would advisor. still I would still flash a thing in the beginning of the episode. Okay, I really would, dude. Hey, we're not financial advisors, nope. and I'm a big dummy, and I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. So take everything in this episode as entertainment purposes only. Yep. And I'm Dan eats everything, right. but I know nothing. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what, you don't know anything about any of this. I don't know nothing about nothing. I don't know shit about fuck Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit about fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> I really don't know about uh, financial advice ever. I'm I, yeah. I'm bad with math. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I've gotten better with math. <laughs> All right. So there's there's the uh, the uh, you know the bullshit that we have to say. But look at this. Have you ever seen a stock act like that ever in your life? That's what my heart rhythm looks like after I leave the buffet. <laughs> I fucking bet, bro. <laughs> I fucking bet. I have no doubts. No doubts at all about that. Uh, te- yeah, dude, I think I'm, it's called but... tachycardia. Arrhythmic tachycardia, maybe. It's nuts, though, bro. Like, this shit is fucking crazy. It's good, man. It's fucking crazy. Can I hold something? <laughs> Can I hold something? It's not real money yet. I haven't sold. Oh, shit. Yeah, don't. Hold a hold a hold a hold a. Didn't they used to say that? Hoddle? 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 It's ho- hoddle. Hoddle. Hold on for hold on for dear oh, life. Hoddle. Hot. That's what it made. That's what it. Made. I thought it was a Game of Thrones. Hold the door reference. Hold her. Oh no. Oh. No, it's hold on for dear life. Oh okay. Go on, get get on that um, that uh, rocket to the moon that you can't land on. Uh, <clears throat> that's all I got. This episode brought yeah, to you by. Uh, Cool blue Gatorade. It's not sponsored by them. It's we're not sponsored. By, we're not sponsored by them. We're not sponsored by Kodak. We're not sponsored by fucking Coca Cola or Red Bull. We're not responsible. We're not sponsored by Manscaped. Yet. Just load that poison up in your body, bud. Are you kidding me? This is delicious. It's uh, <laughs> it has electrolytes. Electrolytes and because Ronald's got electrolytes and water, a little bit of sugar. <clears throat> Potat. It has potassium. electrolytes. I just drank three bananas, dude. Go fucking eat a banana. <laughs> cool Blue's best flavor. I don't care what you say. So, what do you think about GameStop? What it, what's your what's your um, final uh, thesis here? But I, but I, but I, but I. So again, they ripped me off a lot back in the day. So I'm glad they're finally paying people back one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Hold, 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 hold. I can't wait for our trip to Bora Bora. It's coming. Can't wait. We're gonna. Well, we're filming an episode I there too. Not wait. See that? You see that water? I'm gonna be swimming in that bitch. It's crisp and clean. You see it? Can you see it back there? I do. I don't know if they, it's beautiful. You can see it? I can. It looks beautiful. I buddy. will be chunky dunking all up in that water, bro. Chunky Duncan, what the fuck is Chunky Duncan? I don't even want to know. I, what Chunky I, Duncan I, I is. don't skinny dip. I chunky dunk. Oh. <laughs> I chunky dunk. Wow. <laughs> I'll be in there, bro. <laughs> I'll be in there. I get what I, I know what it means yep. now. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can't wait. Chunky Duncan. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Hey, yeah, man. Hey. A couple things. Like, share, subscribe. Yeah, thank you for the uh, all the information. I didn't understand anything about how stocks worked, and now I feel like I might uh, buy one. Yo, if I were talking to myself, I would be telling myself to buy a shit ton of GameStop. Because it is not, yo, it is not over. Oh, well, here's another thing. It was halted 17 times today. 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 There's never been a stock that has been halted that many times in one day. So every time it was about to go up, they halted it. Motherfuckers. And that's why it's at 42 bucks or whatever it is right now. Your government cares about you. They really do. They care about you. Joe. Don't believe Godspeed. me. Godspeed. Godspeed, D. Love you, bud. Love you. You've reached the offices of the Godspeed podcast. We are currently closed. Please leave your information and someone will return your call within 24 business days. Thank you. Overnight, it was like 192, 200, 210. And then one day it goes from 300 to like 400 and whatever, 83. But I feel like we're right in that zone. So the question remains, will it happen again? It could. They could turn off all the buy buttons. I think it, people are already seeing tomfoolery happen over on uh, Robin Hood. If you're on Robin Hood right now, you're retarded. And you're, what are you, gay? Because we've already talked about this in a long time, for a long, long time. We basically can't trust any of the brokers. Definitely can't trust Robin Hood because Vlad is super gay. I mean, he's P. Diddy gay.